The last hand-in activity that you guys performed was to find the velocity of a toy car as it moved at a constant velocity on a horizontal surface. They were well into acceleration now. In fact, we're past the idea of an object just uniformly accelerating. Today we're going to do an activity to go back to that. Look at the acceleration of an object as it accelerates uniformly. Not at 9.81 meters per second squared, because we're not going to drop the object. Rather, we're going to allow the object to roll down an incline and measure the acceleration of somewhere between 0 and 9.81 meters per second squared. You're going to use almost the same apparatus as you use for your constant velocity activity. You're going to use the, uh, the uh, Spark View app on your iPhones. You're going to use uh, the little uh, interface device right here, the AirLink 2 apparatus, which is going to interface with your motion sensor and transmit the data to your iPhone. Okay, now, a little bit of a difference here. You can see the setup here has a, has a track in a dynamics cart, it's called, on that track. That track is elevated a little bit. You don't want to elevate that dynamics track too much, otherwise your acceleration will be too high and it's going to slide down or roll down that track too quickly. Okay, you want to have maybe a book underneath it, maybe two books underneath it at most. You want to take a second or so to go down that track. Does that make sense? If you find that it goes too quick, then you just do it again, just make the height a little bit slower, a little bit smaller. All right, now, there's a couple kinds of tracks that we have here, and there's also a couple kinds of uh, dynamics carts. The first kind of cart that you see looks like this, and it's going to go on the track with grooves. Okay, some of these tracks, four of these tracks have grooves on them, and these wheels are designed to go in those grooves. It's nice because it goes in a nice, perfect straight line. It's very, fairly low friction, so we shouldn't have a lot of external factors other than just gravity acting on it. Okay, now the other type of cart that we're going to use is going to look something like this. There's not a picture of it up on the board, but you can see it in my hand right now. Okay, these, these carts will go in these white tracks. Now, these white tracks are even shorter. So that means you're going to want to make the elevation even smaller. Okay? Don't elevate it like this, or it's going to go way too fast. Elevate it something like this, so it accelerates downwards like that, and still takes a second or so. Doesn't matter what you have, you just have to adjust your height accordingly. Does that make sense? Now, what kind of data are you going to collect here? You probably make a pretty good guess at it right now, because it's going to essentially be the same data as you collected for your position to time, right, when you had a constant velocity. We're going to see time and position. But there's also going to be a velocity given to you. And there's also going to be an acceleration given to you. Now, the last time you did an activity involving this apparatus, you went to plot this on Microsoft Excel, and I told you to delete the last two columns, velocity and acceleration, right? So you were left with a time and position table. Today, you're not going to do that. Today, you're going to keep those two columns. You've got time, position, you've got velocity that you're not ha you don't have to calculate because it's going to give it to you when you email the data to yourself, and acceleration, which you're also going to keep. You're going to copy that into uh, your document, your Google Doc, and you're going to format it nicely so that it's, you know, so that everything's centered and so that the columns are wide enough and, and so on and so on. But then, here comes the meat of it. Then you're going to plot three graphs. Okay, the first graph is going to be a position versus time graph. The second graph is going to be a velocity versus time graph. The third column versus the first column. And the third graph is going to be an acceleration versus time graph. It's going to be the fourth column versus the first column. That's it. That's the only three graphs you have to plot. And then you're going to answer three questions that go along with those three graphs. Number one, describe the motion of the graph using the position time graph referencing the shape of the graph. So in other words, there's no calculation to do for question number one. All you're doing in question number one is taking a look at this graph right here, telling me based on the shape, what do you think is happening to this object? Okay, we know what's happening to it right now, right? It's acceleration. Okay, does that match up with the graph? It should match up with the graph. So uh, for 99.9% .9 of the time right now, you have the answer to question number one right now. The shape of the graph represents acceleration. But if something happens that your shape doesn't represent acceleration, okay, you better make sure that you 
interpret your graph correctly. Okay? I don't want an answer based on what it should be. I want an answer based on what it is, okay? based on what your graph actually shows. Now, second question asks me to calculate the acceleration of the object using the velocity time graph. So for the first one, we're not going to have a calculation here. Okay, it's just the shape of the graph. It's, it should curve upwards, right? And you know that we can't do a calculation with that graph. The second one, however, should be a straight line, and we can do a calculation with it. We're going to get the acceleration from that graph. Okay, I want you to show your work or, get, uh, or make sure you take it right off of Microsoft Excel. Okay, either one of those. Um, if you don't give me the number that you see coming off of Microsoft Excel, then I want you to show me your work. If it's coming right from Excel, then I'll accept the equation on the graph that Microsoft Excel puts on it, okay? So answer that question for the acceleration of the object, which really is the slope of the graph. And then finally, number three, says determine the acceleration of the object using the acceleration time graph, and then compare this value to the value that you determine in analysis question number two. I'm not going to tell you how to do this one, okay? I'll give you a hint, though. It's easy. It's easier than question number two. You want to find the acceleration on an acceleration time graph, and it's a uniform acceleration. It's easier than question number two. So get that value, compare it with the acceleration in number two. Okay, your conclusion will simply be, uh, normally you base a conclusion on a problem and a hypothesis, right? But in this case, okay, all I'm asking you to do again is your data, your analysis, your conclusion, and sources of error again. Okay, don't get used to that because this is the last time that I'm expecting you to do so little on an activity. Just kind of want to ease you into it. Your conclusion this time is essentially going to be, what's the acceleration? Okay, what's the acceleration of this car? Is it a uniform acceleration? And what is the value of that uniform acceleration? And then, what's the follow-up to that? How do you know? Right? How do you know what the acceleration is? Okay, and that comes through analysis, right? Sources of error. List of two or three good sources of error. And then ways to improvement, suggestions for improvement. Make sense? Now, we are going to use the same apparatus effectively as we used last time. That's the SparkView app on your iPhones. And we're also going to use the, uh, the uh, AirLink apparatus uh, that, that uh, attaches via blue, Bluetooth uh, link to your iPhones. It's going to beam your data to it. Now, some of you had a little bit of trouble with that last time. Uh, in Physics 30, we did different activity, but using the same apparatus, Physics 30 period 1 and Physics 30 period 3, um, within a couple of days of when you guys did that last activity, we had very, very few issues. Here's the reason why, I think. Okay? So I want you to listen very carefully. Okay? There's a sheet of instructions inside the box of AirLink apparatuses. Okay, I want every group that takes an AirLink apparatus to take a sheet of instructions, and I want you to follow those instructions to the letter. Now, if you do all of the different things that you need to do, all of the different settings and so on and so on and so on, it sometimes doesn't work. If you do it in the order that it's listed here and you don't skip any steps, it works 99 times out of 100. Okay, so we're going to have a lot less trouble if you guys follow these instructions to the letter. Make sense? Yeah, it's fair enough last time. That wasn't your fault because I didn't give you these instructions last time. I verbally told you and, you know, some people are doing something in one order, some people are doing something in a different order, and it's not working out. That's not your fault. Okay, this time, if you don't follow the instructions, it is your fault. Got it? All right. Excellent. Let's get going. <clears throat>